All right, make sure you are clicking the notification bell when you subscribe or if you're already subscribed to the channel so you can get updates and watch our, you know, important exclusive content. I think a lot of people are missing something with this uh, Charlottesville and the everyone talking about white supremacy in the news and different things like that. I just find it shocking that, you know, where was this? for you know Obama if you if you go back and look at it there are a lot of similarities between the Obama and the Trump hate it's business never personal in the mind of Donald Trump Trump supporters are just customers and in business the customer is always right however this video will not focus on Trump supporters but anti Trump supporters this is not to say there hasn't been an anti-KKK protest before Charlottesville, but to me there are three major flags that put into question the authenticity of anti-Trump supporters' activism. Number one is the lack of support for Obama. Number two, the support for Bernie and Hillary. Number three, the KKK rally at Ole Miss in 2012 during Obama's re-election. And this is geared, you can also put this for basically anybody that is, you know, white people that, you know, white politicians and white uh, journalists that are speaking out against white supremacy and actually saying the words white supremacy. And you've never heard, you didn't really hear them utter white supremacy as much during the Obama administration for eight years as much as you hear it in the first eight months for Donald Trump. There is a paradox for those in opposition for Trump's administration in that uh, there's a change we can believe in slogan by the former president Obama seems to be taking place under Trump's watch rather than Obama's. It seems that truth really is stranger than fiction. The black community anxiously waited for Obama to condemn police brutality and to announce it as a systematic widespread disease affecting black and brown Americans rather than just isolated incidents. Many have prematurely came to the conclusion that Trump will bring out the races in America as if they ever left. Do you think the racist Trump supporters were hiding under the Obama administration? Trump has become the poster child of racism as the President of the United States. There were KKK marches and rallies well before and during the Obama administration. What makes this march any different? Is Trump the drunk uncle, the black sheep of the family? Is this what makes the white community feel embarrassed? After eight years of Republicans disrespecting Obama, it must be questioned. Where was his support from activists that we see now? Let's be clear, there's a distinct difference between activism on behalf of others versus activism for global moral points or global recognition. Can anyone remember this much activism towards a president on a daily basis? This is not to say that Trump hasn't done anything that deserves um, activism, but in fact, there are tweets by Mitt Romney and John McCain, two politicians who are no strangers to racist controversy. It's important to remember that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton were the front runners for the Democratic Party, and it's safe to say that a large majority of anti-Trump protesters supported either one of these candidates. One was revered, revered for his picture that was taken during the Civil Rights March over 50 years ago, but no pictures have surfaced of him being present at any march since then as if civil rights is not an issue anymore. And the other candidate praised the three strikes law and supported mass incarceration. There was an old Miss KKK rally when Obama was reelected in 2012. There were 400 protesters, but only two were arrested. And racial chants could be heard coming from the protesters. Is the world accustomed to black people dealing with and overcoming racism that it doesn't receive nearly the amount of attention of Charlottesville? Are we beginning to see a trend of whites speaking out against racism because it's the right thing, or is this another display of reactionary activism or a trending topic? 
I don't know, but something seems a little off. To those who are anti-Trump and anti-white supremacy, it would seem that if these people indeed thoroughly understood white supremacy, they would have fought to make things easier for Obama in the White House or speak out against the white supremacist protesters who were anti-Obama. Certain people have a problem with Trump being labeled as number 45 as opposed to president, but is it worse being labeled a terrorist, the Antichrist, or different things like that? So just throwing that out there. It's something about the enemy of my enemy is my friend that comes to mind as Democrats and Republicans are speaking out against Trump. However, one thing must be noted. Is it worse, is it worse to be labeled a terrorist in America or is it worse to be labeled a racist in America? As patriotic as this country claims to be, I would say it was it is worse to be labeled a terrorist because we think we're the greatest nation on earth, whether racism exists or not, however much racism exists in the country is irrelevant. And the last thing, you know, the famous phrase Bush said is we do not negotiate with terrorists. The last thing this country want is a terrorist. Yet I didn't see any fights breaking out over uh, Obama being called terrorist. I didn't see, you know, yes, there's a free speech, but what's obvious is that it's very hard to defend white supremacy when it's in front of your face. Many times I've heard people say it's not as bad as it was in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, which is generally used as a scapegoat to deny the injustices taking place today. But Trump's but Trump's reality TV style ignorance, coupled with his KKK Nazi supporters, ironically may be exposing the race of passive whites who may deceptively be speaking out against white supremacy today. In conclusion, if racism is learned, as some people say it is, then so is addiction. For many, recovery from addiction comes after years of inner discipline and building up the inner strength to fight those demons. However, 40 to 60 percent of addicts face a relapse. Only time will tell if the fake white supremacy outrage is just a trending issue for activists that will be forgotten a year from now. Stay tuned for more Melanated Media News on YouTube.